and since he said go to the other side he went apart to go and pray i'll meet you on the other side he must meet you on the other side nothing will cut short a journey before you get to the other side nothing will destroy your life before you get to the other side always hold his watch in mind he said go to the other side before unto Beth bethsaida while he sent away the people and when he had sent them away he departed into a mountain to pray that's the son of god our lord and savior he has left a perfect example for us live a life of prayer before service pray after the service pray before duty pray after the duty pray before any performance pray after that performance pray verse 47 and when evening was come the sheep was in the midst of the sea and he alone on the land and he saw them toiling in rowing for the wind was contrary unto them but please remember the wind contrary is not going to take anything away from their life they must still get to the other side i must still get to the other side and about the first watch of the night that between 3 a.m and 6 a.m early in the morning he comes unto them walking upon the sea and would have passed by them and when they saw him it says walking upon the sea they supposed it had been a spirit and they cried out but he conquered the tempest he conquered the storm he walked on the stormy sea is conquering power over uncommon tempests. We'll see three things here. Number one is personal prayer. His personal prayer. He depended so much upon the Father. He depended so much upon God. He prayed all the time. His personal prayer. Number two, we'll see his prevailing power over the sea over the storm over any challenge and every challenge is prevailing power number three our promised privilege our promised privilege look at number one there that is his personal prayer we're reading here from verse 46 and when he had sent them away he departed into a mountain to pray. That was a lifeline. That was the reason and the basis and the foundation of his constant power. He prayed. He prayed. Tells us in Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Mark chapter 1, verse 35. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place where he could have quietness where he could pray and talk to the father without any distraction he departed into a solitary place and there prayed and there prayed his personal prayer and that's an example for you and for me that our lives should be marked with praying praying every time praying without ceasing praying with faith with unwavering faith never allowing any day to pass without waiting upon the lord and praying luke chapter 18 I'm reading from verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men 
ought always to pray like he did. Always to pray like they saw him always praying and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, for a time, for a season, but afterward, he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her. Lest by a continual coming she weary me. Here the Lord told this parable to make us understand importunity in prayer is important. Constancy in prayer is important. Continuity in prayer is important. We shouldn't um, miss our privilege of praying thinking, I've asked, I've not received, ask again. I've demanded, I've not got, demand it again. I held on to the promises I didn't receive, keep on holding to the promise. And the Lord said in verse 6, here watch, the unjust judge says, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night, which pray day and night, which intercede, pray day and night before him, though he bear long of them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. He will avenge them speedily. The Lord will answer your prayer in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 21, verse 36. Luke chapter 21, verse 36. Watch it therefore and pray always. Don't just pray occasionally. When the water is almost drowning you, don't just pray once in a while. When it appears you are driven to the wall, always when you are happy pray thank him when it's a challenge pray and demand solution and answer from him when there is any problem pray he has solution to every problem watch ye therefore and pray always that she may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Pray always, pray daily, pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. Pray without ceasing. If you could convert part of the time you spend in just talking and talking and talking to your neighbors. Convert part of the time to praying. Convert part of the time you spend in useless, careless talk. Convert that time to praying. Convert part of the time that is wasted on things that are not profitable to our lives. Convert part of that time to praying. Your life will take on a new splendor, a new power, a new breakthrough. In Jesus' name, I pray we'll be doers of the word and we'll pray more than ever before in Jesus' name. The second thing here is his prevailing inner power. We're coming to Mark chapter 6, verse 47. His prevailing inner power. And when evening was come, the sheep was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. And he, 
saw them toiling in rowing for the wind was contrary unto them when the wind is contrary unto you don't look at the wind look at your Christ look at your Savior he will uphold you he will strengthen you he will carry you through in Jesus name a problem is we look too much to the wind at the wind too much at the contrary circumstances too much at the frowning face of an opposer we look too much at the circumstances around us the wind was contrary unto them about the fourth watch of the night he comes unto them he wasn't looking at the wind he wasn't thinking of the wind the contrary wind was not going to de determine his destiny the contrary wind was not going to determine his decisions and then he says walking upon the sea you'll walk upon the sea he that believes on me the works that i do he shall do as he walked on the sea so will you walk on your stormy sea and would have passed them by then if you look at psalm 93 i'm looking at psalm 93 and we're reading from verse 3 psalm 93 verse 3 the floods have lifted up O lord the floods have lifted up their voice the floods lift up their voice the Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. You didn't hear that one. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. Yea, than the mighty waters of the sea. The Lord will see you through. Psalm 104. We're looking at verse 3, Psalm 104, verse 3. Who lays the beams of his chambers in the waters? Who maketh the clouds his chariot? Who walketh upon the wings of the wind? That's our God. That's our Savior. That's our Lord. He walketh upon the wings of of the wind and he tells us if we will pray answers will come miracle will come that's a privilege our promised privilege our promised privilege jesus walked on the storm you will walk on the storms of life whatever storm is reaching at this time as we follow Jesus and we look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith will walk through the contrary wind, will get to the other side. Matthew chapter 14. In Matthew chapter 14, our promised privilege and straightway, verse 27. Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is high, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, if that's you, my Savior, Lord, if it be thou, if that's you, my perfect example, Lord, if it be thou, my master, my king, my lord, lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Bid me come unto thee on the water. You will do it. I said you will do it. Contrary wind, bad situation, stormy sea, or tempest, you will ride on that tempest and you will make progress through that tempest in jesus name 
bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, don't come. And he said, he didn't say, Peter, that's too pushful, don't come. Peter, that's looking too high, don't come. Peter, don't think you can do everything I do, don't come. You're welcome. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the sheep, tell me, tell me, tell me out aloud, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. The Lord will calm your storm. Psalm 107. I'm reading from verse 27. Psalm 107, verse 27. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at the weed's end. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble and he bringeth them out of their distresses. Bringeth them out of their distresses. He maketh the storm a calm. I'm going to read that again. He maketh your storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. Then are they glad because they be quiet. That tempest will be calmed in your life. So he bringeth them unto their desired heaven. He bringeth them unto their desired heaven. From tonight, you are entering your place of quiet and rest in Jesus' name. Point number two now, our costless panic with unnecessary torment. We're coming to Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 49. Mark chapter 6 verse 49. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit. They supposed it had been a spirit. Many times we get into trouble because of our supposition. I see that uh, person and I look at his posture, I look at his body language, and because of my supposition, I make a conclusion. And it's the conclusion that troubles me is not the person. It's not his body language. It's not what he does. It's your own interpretation, your own supposition. They supposed it had been a spirit. We see a situation in our lives, and we see something happening, and we do not know this is the Lord himself, and we suppose this must be Satan. We suppose it's an evil spirit. We suppose it's an enemy. And because of our supposition, we're troubled. And then we begin to cry. We even lose our appetite and we go on compulsory fasting. Because they supposed it had been a spirit, they cried out. For they all saw him and they were troubled. They saw loving Jesus and they were troubled. They saw their own Savior and they were troubled. They saw their friend and they were troubled. And they saw the one that the Father sent to them to take them to the other side and to take them to heaven and they were troubled. He wasn't the cause of their trouble. Their supposition was the cause of their trouble. And many times in our lives, as we look at things happening, and we look at actions and activities of people, and then we think, we suppose that this is what is going on, 
then we become afraid. Your fears will be cancelled in Jesus' name. But they all saw him, and they were afraid, and immediately talked with them, and says unto them, Be of good cheer, change your mind, change your thinking, turn away from that supposition. Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. It is I, be not afraid. Have you heard? I said, did you hear? You will not be afraid in Jesus' name. We're looking at 1 John chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 18. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Christ loved them perfectly. That's why he came to save them. God loved them perfectly. That's why he sent his only begotten son to save them. And God loves us perfectly with an everlasting love. That's why he has sent his son to us. He has sent his Holy Spirit to us. He has sent the word unto us. Be of good cheer, be not afraid. Because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. I said this point is our causeless panic. The panic that ought not to be. The fear that ought not to be. Our causeless panic and unnecessary fear. We're looking at Psalm 53. And I'm reading from verse 5. Psalm 53. We're reading from verse 5. It says, There were they in great fear where no fear was. No reason for the fear. No root for the fear. And no consequence even of the fear. Where no fear was, there were they in great fear. Let me show you some illustrations. We're looking at Second Kings chapter 6. Second Kings chapter 6. In great fear when the fear is unnecessary. In great fear when the fear is costless. In 2 Kings chapter 6, reading from verse 14. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 14. Therefore sent he hither, thither horses and chariots, and a great host, and they came by night, and they compassed the city about. That's the king of Syria sending chariots, horses, soldiers around the city where Elisha was. He did that by night. And so when they woke up in the morning, they were already on attention there. Verse 15, and when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said, Alas, my master, how shall we do? Panic, fear, torment. Because of what he saw, the Lord will open our eyes. Verse 16, and he answered, Fear not. Elisha saw what he didn't see. He only saw the physical. He only saw the chariots and the horses coming from the king of Syria. Elisha saw beyond. You will see beyond. You will see the prince of peace. You will see the prince of power. You will see the Lord Jesus Christ. All the costless panic in your life will vanish away in Jesus' name. 
and he said fear not for they that be with us are more than they that be with them you believe that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world they that be with us he that is with you is greater than he that's in the world in jesus name and elisha prayed and said lord i pray thee open his eyes that he may see and the lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and he saw i will see and he saw i said i will see and behold the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. All those uh, chariots and horses of fire around you, they will not allow the enemy to get near in Jesus' name. Uh, let me show you something very important. Please pay attention. In Deuteronomy chapter 2, Deuteronomy chapter 2, actually Deuteronomy chapter the whole of Deuteronomy is a repetition of the history of the children of Israel since they came out of Egypt until the time they almost entered into the land of Canaan. And now, as Moses rehearsed the history, he gives us revelation that if the people who were afraid, if they had heard, they would not have been afraid. Look at this, Deut Deuteronomy chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 8, and I'm reading from verse 9. Chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. It says, and when we passed, this past tense is, re is recounting the history of the children of Israel. And when we passed by from our brethren, the children of Esau, which dwelt in Seir through the way of the plain from Elam and from Ezion Gaba. We turned and passed by the way of the wilderness of Moab. Think about that. We passed by the way of the wilderness of Moab. Verse 9, and the Lord said unto me, and the Lord said unto me, Distress not the Moabites. Distress not the Moabites. Neither contend with them in battle. Look at Moab. Don't touch them. 